before the sun comes up. You think you were in a lockdown? Are you in a lockdown? We are too. At least we know how it ends. It must end before the sun comes up. Are you wearing a mask? We are waiting that we'll be forced to wear a mask so that you don't see our faces so that you don't see who you are killing not really looking forward to it you are looking out for loved ones we are looking for our lawyer. My lawyer was more scared than I was. And I was on death row. Prisoner 1, the ready-made killer. I did not kill that woman. But you can't hear me. It's an in-camera trial. You can't hear what I say in my defense. My defense is simple. I didn't kill that woman. Did I say that the woman deserved to die? I might have. I actually did say that. Who has not said that someone needs to die at some point? Does the law differentiate between wishing something and making it happen? Mere amal, mere niyat. I should be judged on what I did, not what I wished. A death by hanging, early in the morning, before sunrise. That's what you want. Maybe you should know how I got here. I might have said things to please people. I might have done things to earn some pocket money. I thought they were friends. They probably thought I was a campus rat, passing little tidbits around. A friend said, keep an eye on her. He was a powerful friend. The kind you don't say no to. I said, I'll keep an eye on her. 
If a friend, a powerful friend, asks you to keep an eye on a girl, what do you do? You keep an eye on the girl. So I went and sat and watched and heard what this girl had to say. Then I came back and reported what the girl had said. There was not much to report. She wasn't teaching them how to make bombs. She did talk about revolution, but she had no plan to overthrow my friends. She was planning to bring about a revolution by painting hearts and flowers on random walls. And before painting those walls, she always took permission from the people the walls belonged to. What kind of revolutionary goes around applying for NOCs? One day I heard her lecture people about etiquettes of listening to a kavali. I reported back. She's very bossy, my friend said. What does she think of herself? She probably thinks she's the boss, or at least boss of her own life, of her own space. But it's a public space. Where does she get her funding from? Did you notice her hair? Yes. She has short hair, actually very short hair. I informed my friends who were actually my masters. She has cut her hair like a boy. She has, I said. Did God create women so that they could behave like boys? Before that, I'd never thought why God created women. Did we create this country, sacrificed hundreds of thousands of lives so that our girls, our sisters and mothers could act like boys and boss us around? Keep an eye on her. I went and watched some more. What is she like? She's bossy and has boy hair. Have you watched anything else? Have you seen the paintings on the walls? I felt there was somebody watching me, watching her. Have you read the names on the paintings? Hindu names, enemy names. What message is she sending to young people? Yes. There are lots of young people who come to her. They ask her all kinds of questions about life and love and about how to sell their jokes or their guitar lessons. What will you do if your sister did that? My friend, who now had somebody watching me watching her, said. What if your sister cut her hair short? put up anti-state pictures on the walls, made dirty jokes with young people and lectured you every day. What would you do? I don't have a sister, sir. And the girl I was watching mostly ignored me. But then she did spot me one day. I wish she hadn't spotted me. I wish I wasn't messaging on my phone while attending a lecture about the rise and fall of Tumri. It was a brief lecture. My humiliation was also brief. But it was a public humiliation. You in the third row! She screamed. 
Can you put your phone away? She had stopped midway while moderating the lecture. I dropped the phone in panic, and as I fumbled for it in the dark, all the audience, all 26 of them, turned around and stared at me. I tried to remember all the time I had seen her draw stencil roses and hearts on random walls, but in this moment, all I could think of was my humiliation. And as I looked for the phone, and there were giggles in the hall, she shouted again, If you're not here for the conversation, you should leave. Bitch deserves to die. I thought. Imagine if your sister did that, they said. I was angry. I didn't remind them that I didn't have a sister. She was shot dead on her way home. The gun used was a very common gun. Now they want speedy trial. Justice on tap. Furry and stuff. Hang the bastard. Try him in a military court. How many cases are pending in civilian courts? Here's an idea. Have the trial in secret, but make sure you hang him in public. Public wants a hanging, my lawyer tells me. Public will know better if it's an open trial, I said. We need to keep it secret because it's a national secret. From a low-paid informer who takes pictures of girls painting hearts and roses, I've become a national secret. Public wants a hanging. They don't want to know about your feelings. Open up the court. Let some light in. You are a national secret now. I want to tell the judges. Who are these judges anyway? Why are they so speedy? They're here to get justice for her. And justice for her is justice for you. Can there be justice without truth? If people know what I did, maybe they will spit on me. They will not issue me a character certificate, but they will not want to hang me. And her people are softies. I saw them. They like to paint roses and hearts on other people's walls. They even take permission before painting the walls. They don't like hangings. They even had a seminar on the excessive use of death penalty. It was called Hang Pictures, Not People. I reported on it. You don't know these softies. They love a hanging just like everybody else. They would demand a black sack covering your face. So it wouldn't matter who's shuddering at the end of the rope. They would probably like it if he hanged you on the Valentine's Day. Didn't she want people to come closer? A hanging brings people closer. It's a collective hug.